progress. Hi, everybody. We are going to look at factoring using a greatest common factor. Just put the live transcript on, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Factoring using the greatest common factor, abbreviated GCF. So we're going to start with looking at factoring a linear binomial. And just as a reminder, with numbers, when we factor, we're really looking at finding prime factors, usually. But it's the things that multiply together to give you the result that you're given. So what numbers multiply together to give you 10? And the two prime factors are two times five. Um, just to compare this to what we have been doing when we've been multiplying together uh, different polynomials, factoring now is the inverse. Right, so notice here, factoring 10 is the inverse of multiplying two times five. So if you were asked to multiply two times five, right, you get 10. So they're inverses and sometimes I, think this is kind of a useful mental structure um, to think of these inverse operations. Okay, so going this direction, you multiply. And I just did this at random. And going this direction, you factor. So that's what I mean by inverse. You know, if you multiply two times five first, you get 10. And then if you factor 10, you're back at two times five. So it's kind of undone what you did to begin with. Again, we have looked at say multiplication, like as an example, suppose you're asked to multiply nine times W minus three. And we know here we need to use the distributive property and multiply the nine times the W and then use the minus and then the nine times three. So now if we look at this problem in Alex, you're asked to factor. And so we're really asked, being asked to find these two factors. The nine is one factor and the binomial W minus three is another factor. And the way we get this is we find the biggest factor in common for both terms and we factor that out. So we look at the numbers nine and 27, and we look at all of the factors of nine. Factors of nine are one and three and nine. <clears throat> so you guys probably remember the factor trees. That's one way you can kind of think of this. You have to also remember one times nine. Those are both factors too. And then same with 27. You could, you could think like this, but it's probably easier to list them in this fashion. Right, so 27 is three times nine, and then nine is three times three. 
So three's a factor, nine's a factor, one's a factor, and 27 is a factor. And we're looking for the greatest common factor. So it's exactly what it says. Greatest, it's the biggest. And common, that means it has to be a factor of both factor. <laughs> OK? So nine is the largest factor that's common to both of these. So that's what we're going to factor out. So the way I kind of think about these is, OK, nine is the GCF, the greatest common factor. So I'm going to pull the nine out. And then I ask myself, nine times what is going to give me the nine W? Because I know I'm going to be multiplying it. Nine times what gives me the nine W? And it's got to be a W. And then I need a minus sign. And then nine times what gives me the 27? And it's three. Okay, so that's the answer for this one. Let's look at another problem. Okay, 20V minus 30. So first I think of the 20 and the 30, and I factor out the largest factor of both of them, the GCF. And 10 goes into 20 twice, 10 goes into 33 times. Two and three have no common factors other than one. So 10 is the biggest common factor, the GCF. And then I ask myself, 10 times what is going to give me the 20V? And it's going to be two to give me the 20. And then I need a V to give me the V. And then there's a minus. And to get the 30, I would have to multiply 10 times 3. So that's the answer to this one. Okay. Maybe one more. So six is two times three. 21 is seven times three. Three is the GCF. To get six X, I have to multiply by two to get the six and then an X. There's a minus. And then to get the 21, I have to do three times seven. Okay, so that's the answer there. All right. So in the problems we just looked at, there were really only GCFs for numbers. And now we're looking for the GCF of two monomials. So we're not asked to factor it. We're just looking here, the instructions say to just find the greatest common factor. So really you wanna look at the numbers first. 14 and five have no factors in common, right? Five is a prime number. 14 has factors of one times 14, right? One and 14, and then two times seven, so two and seven but there's no factor of five. And then you look at m squared and x cubed, they don't have any factors in common either. So really just one is the greatest common factor for those two monomials. So here's another one. When you look at the two numbers, they don't share any common factors other than one. They're relatively prime. And then when you look at a cubed and a to the fourth, 
they both have three factors of A in common. Okay, so A cubed is in common. And this is a nice way of kind of thinking about these and writing them out. You know, 13 is prime, and then A cubed is A times A times A. 14 is two times seven. So you can see the numbers have nothing in common. And then there are four factors of A. So you can see that the three factors of A are in common. I think we already did one like that and like that. If there's anything a little different. Okay, so four and 13 have no factors in common. And then there's one factor of B in common. So B is the GCF. This again, eight and 11 have nothing in common and C squared and X to the fourth have nothing in common. So their GCF is one. One more. All right, so for seven and 11, those are both prime numbers. They have no factors in common other than one. And then two factors of X are in common. So those two factors, x squared, gives you the GCF. All right, we can do the same thing with three monomials. And, you know, again, I like how they do it this way. You can factor the numbers. So 18 is two times nine or two times three times three. And then 42 is six times seven or two times three times seven. 12 is four times three or two times two times three. So there's one two in common and there's one three in common or a factor of six. And you might be able to just look at those numbers, 18, 42, and 12 and reason through just having some number familiarity to identify that GCF without listing all the factors. And then the first one has two factors of W, four factors of W, and three factors of W. So there are two in common. So notice it's the smallest exponent. But again, we don't want to just memorize that. We want it to make sense. So there are two in common with all three of these monomials. So 6w squared is that GCF. So we'll look at one more of these. And again, you could reason through 9 times 3, 9 times 5, and 9 times 7. So 9 is the GCF. And then there's only one Y in common because this one only has one. So nine Y. And again, you could list out all of the factors. This is a good way to think through it and to write these out until you feel super comfortable. And then here we're doing the same thing with multivariate monomials. So that means there's more than one variable, but same exact idea, right? The GCF of the numbers, the coefficients is eight because that's eight and that's eight times three. And then <clears throat> we look at, you know, the X's in common and there are three X's in common. And there are two V's in common. There are no Y's in common. This monomial has no Y's. So that's our answer.
And another way to do it is to list out all the factors like we saw before. And then kind of look at, you know, the lowest. This is a lot of extra work, I think, but um, you could look through this explanation, you know, it's just really doing a table showing, you know, the powers of the twos and the threes and the y's and the x's and the z's. I think this way is much easier, more straightforward. So we're looking for the GCF of the numbers and then the x's, then the y's, then the z's. All right, factoring out a monomial from a polynomial. So again, we wanna take out the biggest thing possible so we can factor it. So first we're gonna look at the numbers, the 10 and the four. And two is the GCF of 10 and four. We have two times five and two times two. And then we look at what's in common of the W's. And the most in common is W squared. And then again, ask yourself, 2w squared times what gives you the 10w cubed? So I look at the numbers first, and I need 2 times 5 to give me the 10. And then w squared times w to give me the w cubed. And then there's a plus sign. And then to get the next term, because again, I know how this gets distributed. 2 times 2 gives me 4. And w squared times nothing, times 1, right? I don't need any other factors to get the w squared. So you can always multiply these out to check that it works, you know? Because that's really what we're doing. We're kind of multiplying and factoring by multiplying in our heads. So to really multiply it out, you would distribute. And you multiply the numbers, you get 10, you get W cubed, and then there's a plus, and then two times two gives you four, and you have a W squared. So it works. But for all of these factoring, there's no reason why you shouldn't always be able to tell that you got the right answer. Let's look at another one. All right, so again, you wanna pull out the biggest number in common. And there is no number you know, in, in common, one is the highest number. So we don't really pull out a one. This one is good for everything. Um, but 12 is four times three, which is two times two times three, and then five is prime. So they share no common factors. And then you can see that there's one Y in common. So you pull the Y out. So then when you multiply, you need a y times 12 to give you the 12y, and then you need the minus sign, and then you need to multiply by five to give you the five, and you need two more factors of y. So again, I'm thinking about how I multiply this to get that answer. Okay. And the last one, same idea, but this is multivariate. So again, we just want to look at the, you know, one thing at a time, look at the numbers, 13 and 15, the GCF is three. And then look at the U's. You have two of them and you have eight of them. So the most in common is two of them. And then for the V's, the most in common is seven of them. There are no X's in common. And then I think about how this is going to multiply. Three times five 
gives me the 15. I don't need to multiply by anything. I already have the u squared. And then I need to multiply by one more factor of v to get the v to the eighth. And then I need a minus sign. Now I'm looking at the second term here. I already have the three, so I don't need to multiply by a number. To get u to the eighth, I need six more factors of u. I already have seven factors of v, but I do need the x to the fourth. So again, I'm actually doing the multiplication in my head. So this works the same exact way. We just have multiple variables. Maybe one more. All right, so pull out the GCF of the numbers, which is four. And then there are five X's in common. I should have probably done the, the W's first. Let me do the W's first. Okay, so there are five W's in common. And there are five X's in common. There are no Y's in common. I don't need to multiply by a number. I need four more factors of W. I don't need any more X's, but I do need the Y squared. And then there's a plus sign. Now I would need to multiply four by six to give me 24. I already have the five W's and I need one more X. So this is our answer here. Okay. So this is all for factoring using a GCF.